A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 6th March. On the front page you have Supreme Court to step in if Nirbhaya convicts are not hanged on March 20. So we have been seeing in this Nirbhaya gang rape case the convicts have been sentenced to death but then delaying tactics have been used for uh, delaying the hanging process. So the, all four convicts have to be hanged together because they, are, uh, they have been sentenced in the same case. So if one is given mercy, the other's mercy petition also depends on them. And they have been filing mercy petition one by one. First they filed curative petition before the Supreme Court one by one. And now then again the mercy petitions are being filed you know, by one, randomly by one of them. So they are not exhausting the, their petitions simultaneously. So this delaying tactics is evident. The government had also, central government had also intervened asking the Supreme Court to fast track the process. So now it, it is the Supreme Court which has now stated that it will step in if Nirbhaya convicts are not hanged on March 20. And it will decide government appeal for nod to hang them separately. But the Supreme Court ruling is that they cannot if they are convicted in the same case. And it is in general for any case. If the convicts are, all are convicts in the same case, if a mercy petition of one is pending, then the others cannot be hanged. Because then uh, if the one person is given mercy, then others' mercy petitions are also dependent on that. Then next is, PM's visit to Brussels puts off as COVID-19 cases rise to 30. So the number of new coronavirus cases in the country are increasing. Prime Minister has uh, delayed uh, his visit to Brussels also, in the European Union capital. So here you can see Ghaziabad man tested positive. States have been asked for to form rapid response teams to tackle new coronavirus. Then below you have Employee Provident Fund organization lower interest rates to 8.5% for 2019-20. So salaried employees are to get 0.15% less in interest on Provident Fund deposits for 2019-20 as Central Board of Trustees of the Employees Provident Fund reduce the interest rate from 8.65 to 8.5 percent then below you have npr data useful for welfare schemes says home minister so union home minister has informed the parliamentary panel that date and place of birth of parents will complete all data for all the households as such too and these additional questions will facilitate back-end data processing making data items of as such more relevant so, there is a need to update the NPR to incorporate these changes. It is said Aadhaar is individual data while NPR contains family-wise data. So, various welfare schemes of the state and central governments are generally family-based for which NPR data may be useful. On page 8, you have Karnataka budget set to fuel rise in price of prices of essentials. So, petrol and diesel will cost 1.6 and 1.59 rupees more per litre. And here you can see the excise duty on Indian made liquor has been increased by 6%. Stamp duty on first time registration of new apartments of less than 20 lakh rupees is reduced from 5% to 2%. So these are some of the prominent announcements made in the Kadataka budget. It has announced tax hike of hikes of essential commodities because it says there is revenue loss due to 8,887 crore rupees reduction in taxes. Uh, it's state's share of central taxes and there's a deficit due to GST compensation to of 3000 crore rupees. On page 9 you have COVID-19. Rajya Sabha erupts on cow urine claim. So this is regarding controversy being created over the claims being made by some BJP leaders that cow dung and gomutra, cow urine can ward off new coronavirus. So this issue had been raised in the Rajya Sabha and uh, you can see uh, the Vice President, Chairman of uh, Rajya Sabha, when Sam Venkaya Naidu, he said that no controversy should be created on the sensitive issue. On the editorial page, the first editorial is, read them the riot act. So this is regarding how Delhi police uh, function during the ri Delhi riots. So it says those responsible for dereliction of duty in the Delhi police should face action. So the entire police force cannot be targeted but those who are guilty of dereliction of duty they should be 
take an action against. So that's what this editorial says. Because no FIR has been registered against the police two years. Though they had committed atrocities during the riots. And then below you have truly Malay. So this is regarding Malaysia. The Malaysian political crisis. So this says attempts to privilege the Muslim majority over others which hurt Malaysia's pluralistic ethos. So the way the government is being formed and you know the politics which is going on. So that is criticized here in Malaysia. And here the lead article is an unrest, a slowdown in a health epidemic. So there is unrest in the country, protests going on. There is a slowdown in the economy and now we are facing the new coronavirus health epidemic. Too. So this is uh, an article written by former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. He says India has slid from being a global sh showcase of liberal democracy to a majoritarian state in economic despair. And here you have China's high-tech battle against new coronavirus. So how technology was used to fight against the virus is highlighted here, which is very important. So it says it helps people cope with stress of the quarantine life, quarantine life too, plus also helps in fight against the virus in other ways. So the you know, article talks about how China used technology. So here you can see there were apps for tracking and testing which were used so that is how technology was used then on opet page you have parle coverage on friday so today the question is should the sedition law be scrapped so news counter views are given on this and here you can see it says given its frequent misuse either the courts must strike it down or parliament should revoke it so sedition basically is in words so this is colonial era law and this uh, is said to have no place in a democracy where you have freedom of speech so you can uh, say things which are against not the country but against the policies of the government on page 12 you have Election Commission moves linking Aadhaar with voter ID. So the law ministry has informed the Lok Sabha that it has a proposal from the Election Commission to link Aadhaar with the election photo identity card to prepare an error-free electoral roll. So law ministry has uh, got this proposal which is seeking amendment of Representation of Peoples Act of 1951 to link uh, election card with Aadhaar. On page 13, you have USCIRF, that is United States Commission on Religious Freedom, on International Religious Freedom. It has started hearing witnesses on NRC and CA, and it says denying citizenship to certain group can be understood by some as a signal to carry out attacks on it. So, see so the hearing is focused on NRC and CA, and even the riots which took place in Delhi. Then below you have India among least free democracies, say study. So this is a study which shows how India has become one of the world's least free democracies. And uh, warning has been given to Indian government regarding the alarming departure from democratic norms under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP government. And how this could blur the value-based distinction between India and China. So this is Freedom in the World report. 2020 report which ranks India at 83rd position. The bottom five countries in the free category are you can see Botswana, Peru, India, Timor Leste, and Tunisia. Then below you have Sabri Mala first, CA later, say CGI. So, Chief Justice of India Sharad Bobde has clarified that the challenge raised by the Citizenship Amendment Act would be would have to wait till nine judgments of the court wraps up hearing on a reference made to it in connection with the Sabrimala case. So that would be heard first and then CA petitions. There are around 140 petitions which have been filed against CA in the Supreme Court. On international page you have virus leaves 290 million students out of school. So this is what UNESCO, United Nations, Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. It says 
that uh, the outbreak, new coronavirus outbreak, global scale and speed has resulted in educational disruption, unparalleled educational disruption. On business page you have, Yes Bank put under moratorium till April 3. So, deposit withdrawal has been capped at rupees 50,000 and the Yes Bank board has been superseded by RBI. So, government has put this private sector bank, Yes Bank, under moratorium till April 3. Then this is banks announce share swap ratios. So, this is the big four banks which are proposed to merge. So, this is Oriental Bank of Commerce, Union Bank of India, Punjab National Bank and Allahabad Bank. So, the two banks which will be merging you can see. Oriental Bank of Commerce and Union Bank of India will merge with Punjab National Bank. And Allahabad Bank will merge with Indian Bank. So, share swap announcements have been made for creation of four big state-owned lenders from April 2020. And Syndicate Bank is the th another one which will be merging with Canara Bank. Andhra Bank and Corporation Bank will also merge with Union Bank of India. Then below you have NSC told to submit roadmap for diluting stake in CAMS. So this is SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India, which has directed National Stock Exchange NSC to submit a plan for diluting its entire stake in Computer Age Management System scams, which is the country's largest share registrar and transfer agent. So, stock exchange NSC has 37% stake in this uh, uh, computer age management system. So, this has it has been told by CAB that it would not be able to divest completely at once, but uh, it would be gradually diluting its stake. So, a roadmap has been asked to be submitted. So that is it. These are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website ahr.com. Thank you.